We're walking in the power of God. We go up and we raise that person up. Don't you think they're going to want to know about Jesus? Don't you think they're going to want to come to hear more do whatever I have to do to be close to Jesus, I will do. But the problem is we want to give people just words without the power. It's the power of God that's going to lead in the goodness of God. And that's a good thing to raise someone out of a wheelchair, right? <coughs> if during COVID, if we were able to go and pray for people and they got delivered. Now, the news might not have liked it. Well, the news might have, I don't know. The pharmaceutical company would not have liked it. Mm -hmm. But imagine if we were walking. See, that's the power that dwells within us as children of God. But we have to cultivate it. No differently than we are able to stop the storms. <clears throat> People think we're crazy because we like to control the weather. My daughter was just in Columbia, and she said while they were there, number one, I had everyone praying, thank you. She came back safely. I said, who goes to Columbia? You know, in my mind, there's nothing in Columbia but drugs and stuff. But she said it was supposed to rain the whole week. She took authority over it. It did not rain. So someone else, like her friend that's with her, probably thought she was crazy. But see, that's the power we have, but we have to cultivate it. So we have to cultivate the power for healing. We have to cultivate the power for miracles. You know, I was telling Matt, Betty Hens meetings, or Michael Kulionis, is that his name? What? You can't get into their meetings because they're packed out, but they're packed out with Christians. It's not supposed to be that way. It's supposed to be packed out with unbelievers to see the power of God. We as Christians should be experiencing the power of God. We should be walking in those same um, demonstrations of the power, but we're getting in line like everybody else. So that's the reason if people feel that evangelism or Christianity or whatever in America hasn't been propagated, it's because we as a church haven't been walking in the power of God. When we walk in the power, we will see those miracles. We will see the people flooding to the churches instead of right now flooding away because the enemy has them thinking all kinds of stuff. You can go to churches today and they'll tell you that they I mean, they might, and I'm not trying to get political, but this is going to sound political. You know, I don't want to go there. But they have drag queens talking to preschoolers in schools. And you have some churches okay with that. Well, number one, I don't want to see a drag queen. Why does my preschooler have to see a drag queen? But see, you're anti-whatever. You're not open-minded if you don't agree with that. But you've got ch some churches that agree with that. You have, now, in terms of abortion, people have their differing of opinions and everyone's free to it. But I believe in the sanctity of life. I do believe there are extenuating si situations that maybe someone's got to deal with things differently, but that's not the norm. We shouldn't just have blanket, whatever. You know there are some states you can abort a child up to, like if someone went to labor right now, they could still go get an abortion. It's like that in most states. There are two states that are trying to change the definition of murder so that you can still kill that baby after it's born. Within the first week, I think it is. So Matt, when you ask in terms of this nation, there's just, the devil has just been doing crazy stuff, and has gotten the church to agree. So it's hard to walk in the power of God when you're going to get some things that might not line up with his word. You know, I mean, I've heard of a pastor say, well, I'd rather have them get aborted than get 15 and get shot. All right? And we then can't turn around and say, well, you know, Where's the church? See, some of the church things like that. So I'm just saying for us, we've got to understand the power of God that Jesus shed his blood for, that Jesus did it so that we didn't have to deal with this stuff. You know how he must feel when we're walking around sick like the world, when we're walking around depressed, when we're walking around dealing with all the issues of life, that he 
went on the cross, defeated death, hell, and the grave for us to turn around and say, oh, no big deal. Kill that baby. Oh, no big deal. Do this, that, and that. Abortion is just a modern day sacrifice on the altar of hell. That's all it is. It's just under a different terminology that people have bought into and they try to make you think something's wrong with you and they all, oh, well, what about rape? Okay, we'll deal with rape. What about death to the mother? You ever notice they never talk about, well, what about that nine month old child, baby in the womb you want to kill? They never, you never heard of that, have you? Yeah, that's who he is. But see, that's where for us to be discerning. We got to understand the world we're in right now in this nation, a lot of stuff is corrupt. But we as the body of Christ are not. We're the ones who are supposed to bring the light. We can't be surprised by what's going on because God said in the latter days, all of this would happen. So why are Christians surprised? We should be saying, well, he did tell us this was going to happen. So we've got to gird ourselves up and be stronger than we've ever been instead of, oh, well, but that's what they say. No, we're supposed to be different. We're the light. We're the salt. If we lose our savor, the whole world dies. So don't let people you loved go to hell because you weren't strong enough to say, that's not God's will. There are people I'm talking to because I already know. I already know the conversation. So I, I don't talk to them. You're, and you don't have to debate with everybody. You don't have to try to convince somebody. God will send you the people that you're supposed to talk to. Other than that, don't you don't have to waste your breath because the enemy already has them. The enemy is tormenting them. That's when you turn around and you go pray for people. Because there are people, stuff going on in this world, you would be shocked. Uh, but we're in America, so we think, oh, you know, life is good. We have to see, when's the last time you've been in a grocery store and saw every chef built? It's been a long time, hasn't it? And my husband had said years ago, he had said the U.S. was going to become like a third world nation after we went to um, South America and Ukraine and all those places. He's like, the U.S. is going to become like a third world nation. And I was like thinking, oh, you are so like not hearing from God, you know. But look at where we are today. I'm seeing lack like I've never seen before in the store. Is it manipulated? I don't know. Is it real? Who knows? All I know, it is playing out to affect the people, and Christians are falling into it. We should pray, okay? They don't have milk. Well, I don't care about anyone else, but I'm getting milk. They don't have eggs. I'm getting eggs. Because you know, Walmart's been out of eggs. Can you believe that? Eggs of all things. And then they don't want you having chickens to lay their own eggs. Oh, yeah, people. People are fighting right now to keep their chickens in their yard. But, you know, so it's, it's like, they don't want you to better yourself. So I'm just here today to say, if God told these men they're more than enough, all of us are more than enough. If God told each one of them that he loves them, God loves all of us. We gotta take that word for ourselves. He won't leave me off of you. I don't know. There, there's just something. There, it's almost like an aura, aura around you, and I'm not talking like New Age stuff. It, it's and maybe it's just because way you said you like, I don't know. <laughs> the, the, the glow. <laughs> but God's doing something new. He's doing something new in your life that you've never seen before. You, you actually might be shaken to the core by some of the stuff He's going to do in your life. You just let Him do it. Go along for the ride. Say, and just say thank you, Father. Just receive it and say thank you. Because he's about to shake your world up. In a good way. Because I don't believe in bad stuff. So he, he's going to shake your world up in a good way. And he's about to reconnect some relationships. There have been some broken relationships. And I know that can sound generic. But he's about to reconnect you. And I'm sensing with family. <clears throat> now you do have children, right? Are you in good relationships with them? Okay, so maybe it's the other one. But I'm just sensing he is gonna reconnect. It was a close relationship. 
But it's going to all come out of the shaking up that he's doing in your life. You know, that he's going to reconnect you with that person. And it's going to be a good connection, not drama or issues. It's actually going to turn out to be good. Amen? Okay, I think I am 